some amplifiers can do a lot more than you might think, and some of them can actually measurably change the sound. Let's talk about it. This is the Sennheiser HDV820, a balanced DAC amp. It's not cheap at all by any means, but I think it's a perfect example of how an amplifier can measurably change the frequency response of certain headphones. But I also wanna take this as a chance to talk a little bit more about output impedance and why it's not necessarily a good or a bad thing. First, I'm gonna go over the build and IO of this thing, and then we'll get into some more details about sound. On the back here, well, we have XLR and RCAN. And you'll notice on the RCAN, there's a little gain adjuster. It's Kind of interesting, you don't see that very often. You also have USB optical and coax in, and then you have XLR outputs that can be used as a preamp. Something to note about these outputs is that they are on all the time, whether you have a headphone plugged in or not, those preamps are putting out a signal. Then a standard power connector. On the front, you have quarter inch for your single-ended connections. You have four pin XLR for balance, and then two 4.4 millimeter connectors. Those are balanced and you can use them at the same time. Multiple people could listen to headphones together. You also have a very satisfying illuminated power button. It's very nice, clicky, but also soft feeling input selector and then a volume knob that also feels pretty great. And this amp looks good, it feels good. It takes up a pretty deep footprint on the desk, but it's not crazy tall or crazy wide and it is an all-in-one. But let's talk about the sound. This has an output impedance of 40 ohms. That's pretty high output impedance. And you see people talking about how that affects the damping factor. You'll see people talk about how it will change a headphone's frequency response in cases. Impedance is a relationship of voltage and current. Current is the actual movement of electrons through a circuit, while voltage is what we usually think of when we talk about electricity. We usually don't have to think about current in headphones because most amplifiers supply a constant voltage, meaning when we look at the frequency response, we're looking at output for a given voltage. The thing is, all headphones have a load impedance, which determines how much current is actually flowing at different frequencies. This starts to matter when our amplifier has a higher output impedance, because that limits the amount of current which can flow for a given voltage. The low impedance parts of a headphone's frequency response, the ones which take more current for the same voltage, because impedance is voltage times current, will get quieter relative to the high impedance parts. Let's take the HD6XX as an example. Driven from an amplifier with no output impedance, we get a little more output at 100Hz than we do at 500Hz. Why? Because 100Hz is around the natural resonant frequency of the driver, where it stores energy the most efficiently. We also see the impedance rise at 100Hz from 330 ohms to a little over 500 ohms, but at 500Hz it remains the same. In this case, if our amplifier supplied 1 volt into 500Hz, we'd get about 3 milliamps of current, but at 100Hz it would be a little under 2 milliamps. In spite of that, we still get a little more output at 100 hertz than 500 hertz because that's where the driver is more efficient. What if the same 1 volt has to go through a 40 ohm output impedance, like on the HDV820? Well, at 500 hertz, we now get about 0.89 volts, which is 2.7 milliamps, while at 100 hertz, we only drop to about 0.93 volts meaning we lose less than 0.2 milliamps. The result is that the bass gets slightly higher relative to the mids, or more accurately, both of them get quieter, but we're just losing the bass less. When the impedance of the headphone and the output impedance are closer, this effect gets bigger. That relationship is usually referred to as damping factor, which comes from the fact that there are large impedance rises on the resonant frequencies of drivers. So a lower output impedance damps them by limiting the amount of boost you can get at that frequency. Some people misinterpret this to mean that low damping factor means the bass is uncontrolled, but it's really just a different way of framing a boost at the resonant frequency, just the same as any EQ. You can notice a much bigger change when you get closer to the output impedance of the amplifier or under the output impedance of the amplifier. It's not like your amplifier is now producing a sloppy, uncontrolled sound, it's just changing the frequency response. I mean, it is a bit more nuanced than that, but realistically, you're just changing the frequency response of the headphone based off of its impedance curve. Now, a lot of headphones won't be affected by this, and some will. In this case specifically, I measured 10 headphones. I figured that was a decent enough sample size, and out of that, four of them changed their frequency response. You would also get this effect on things like multi-driver IEMs with crossovers, headphones that have a passive analog filter, things like the LCD XC, which has a notch filter, or things like the DCA Expanse, the Erebus Everest, but also just any headphone that has a non-linear impedance that's closer to or below the output impedance of this. So the Audio-Technica 8500X, it gets a base shelf and a good one in a good area. Now, of course, this won't always be an improvement, but pretty much across the board, all the ones I've tested 
it's been an improvement. Generally, a planar will have a linear impedance curve, so you're not really going to see this effect with planars. I mean, you might, but it'll be a more rare case if a planar is affected by this. But it's a cool effect, and you see people talk about output impedance like this big taboo thing that'll absolutely ruin your sound, like you're getting worse sound quality as a result, and that's not necessarily the case. You will get some degree of change of the output sound, and that could be closer to a target response. It could be a better frequency response, or it could be worse. It just depends on the headphone and how it's going to interact with the amplifier. I mean, luckily, this is something that you can basically calculate. If you know the headphone's impedance curve and you know the output impedance of the amplifier, you can determine how it's going to respond for the most part. Though so I know that everything has tolerances and variances and things like that. And all that said, I do find this amp deck to be on, well, the expensive side. It looks nice, it feels nice, and it's basically a solid state tube amp. Realistically, a lot of people would probably like that. I mean, I prefer that over the topping A90 with a good handful of headphones here because, well, it does improve their frequency response. A few of them it brings closer to Harman, some of them it just brings closer to a more neutral profile. And while I personally generally buy less expensive amplifiers, I do think this was a good opportunity to sit down and talk more about output impedance and try and clear up misconceptions about it. Because more often than not, you see people talking about output impedance as this horrible thing, when realistically it's just another number, just another variable, and something that realistically doesn't have to have a negative impact on the objective or subjective sound experience. Now, you will get a more consistent frequency response with a low output impedance. But a more consistent one doesn't necessarily mean a better one, depending on the headphones you own. Outside of that, this is a pretty powerful amp. I've enjoyed using it. I appreciate the guys at Sennheiser letting me borrow it. And of course, I think it pairs well with the things that they make. The HD800S, I think, is a no-brainer for it. Though it definitely has more power than the HD800S needs. This thing could drive planars pretty easily. And the 800S, I really never ended up turning up that loud. But other things like the 660S2, the HD6XX, they all paired well. It gave me a little bit of that tubey sort of experience. Again, this sounds like a solid state tube amp, but without the distortion. It's kind of the best of both worlds in a way. Getting the frequency response change of a tube amp, but not getting the distortion of a tube amp. You would think there would be a bigger market for things like that. Then again, Sennheiser makes it, so people must be buying it. Which, speaking of that, let me know if you want a really, really in-depth video about output impedance, how it works, and its kind of interrelationship between headphones, IEMs, amps, and all that. It actually is really cool once you go down the rabbit hole. Anyway, I thought this was a really cool example of an amp that we actually can prove makes a difference in sound. I think a lot of amps, not all, but a lot of amps do sound the same these days. I mean, my daily driver at my desktop is the Quest Island 15. That's a dongle lamp, and that powers pretty much the entire headphone wall. Which is not to say something bad about the expensive amplifiers out there people buy, but I do think a good chunk of them, if you put them side by side, a lot of people wouldn't notice a difference. Which is why I think an amplifier like this is cool and why I think it's fun to talk about. Now, I know that probably is going to spark a bit of a discussion down in the comments, so keep it friendly with one another. Let's enjoy the hobby together. If you have differences of opinion, that's cool. Express them respectfully with one another. In fact, a great place to do that is probably over in our community, either on the forum or in the Discord link in the video description. If you guys see me in there, I'd love to talk with you about it. But I think for now, I'm going to go back to listening to some very fun headphones sitting over on my desk. A few people on the headphone show and myself are working on a tier list. I know, a tier list. The absolute peak of YouTube content, the pinnacle, absolute summit fi. We'll probably post that in like a week or two, and that's going to go over a lot of things that are currently on the market, ranking them best to worst, the things we like, the things we don't, and why. So make sure you stick around, subscribe, click that button down below, because you don't want to miss that. If you really don't want to miss it, turn on notifications. Other than that, I think it's time we wrapped up this video, so let's do a quick conclusion. Sennheiser HDV820, a pretty expensive DAC amp, but one that is definitely unique in its function. It acts like a tube amp in terms of how it can change the frequency response, but without the distortion of a tube amp and with the power at low impedance of a solid state amplifier. That's a pretty cool combo. It's not something you see often, and I think that it's a pretty cool amplifier. It's definitely not for everyone, but I'm also glad that it exists. So with that said, guys, if you liked this video, leave a like down below, comment, let me know what you want to see in the future. If you want to get active in the community, you can at the forums or Discord, both available at the link in the video description. As always, don't forget to stick around, subscribe for more videos like this in the future. Until next time, guys. Peace.